Okay, so here comes one of the really key ideas and also one of the more beautiful ideas in this uh, topic. Uh, the subject of fundamental groups, this lev uh, level of algebraic topology, unlike homology, has just two, three key ideas, and this is one of them, okay, which is to understand why the fundamental group of a circle is Z. Okay, the fundamental group is paths up to homotopy. And you can imagine, so this picture is from Wikimedia, it's not my own. You can imagine the paths as being determined by how many times you go around the circle. However, you may not go straight around, you may go back and forth and back and forth like this, come back here and then eventually make our way. But effectively, you've gone once around this. Okay, but since continuous functions can bend all the time, it will take some work and some ideas to show that there is actually such a meaningful number, which is uh, the number of times we go. And the way we prove it using what are called covering spaces is also absolutely crucial. Okay, so let me just summarize. Let's get rid of this picture and keep it clear. So let me summarize the point that we want to do to, to, to show this. Okay, so we define, of course, phi from well, we'll define it from omega s1, 1 to z, some number. Uh, let me call it phi tilde. We show this induces So we show. Well, what do we have to show if alpha is equivalent to beta? Then phi tilde of alpha equals phi tilde of beta and so what we get from that is that uh, so so have uh, phi which maps pi one of s one one comma to z okay and so this is another key point there are two parts uh, crucial here and then relatively in fact we get in fact so we get phi is an isomorphism. And here by which I mean it's an isomorphism of groups. It's a bijection and it's an isomorphism of groups. Okay, the last is relatively easier given the first two. And this one will depend on what's called path lifting. And this one on homotopy lifting. And this is the crucial idea of this picture. So I'm going to just sketch first what the, what we mean, what are the ideas behind it, okay? So first look at this neighborhood here that is drawn in the picture. This is what is called an evenly covered neighborhood, okay? Uh, I should mention here, even though this is not really S1, this is S1 cross, if you wish, minus epsilon epsilon. It's really an annulus. Uh, you can either say that all these arguments work equally well for that, with appropriate modifications, or you can say fundamental group is the same for that in S1, okay? But it's much easier to see pictures with a little bit of thickening. So so this is what is called an evenly covered open set. What, what do we mean by this? If I look at the inverse, okay. So first of all, we have a map. Well, what is this creature? This is a spiral. So this is really just the real numbers, of course, thickened a bit. Okay, so we have, in the case of circle P from R to S1, okay, such that uh, P of T is e to the 2 pi i t. You can think of this as the angle map. Okay, so we have a map. Given the angle, you get a point on the circle, but given a point on the circle, we don't really have an angle. We have an angle well defined only up to 2 pi. So it's not an invertible map, but we have a map from R cross minus epsilon epsilon, or in this case, simply R to the circle. Okay, and with respect to this, this is evenly covered. Okay, so here's the definition. Now, this is for an arbitrary map given p from x hat to x, so let's suppose we are given p from x hat to x, uh, and it's a continuous. And let's just assume it's subjective, because later we'll need it to be subjective, okay? Then, suppose I take a subset u, 
this in x is evenly covered if something happens in this as in this picture what is p inverse of u here well it's many copies of u right so this is the is the disjoint union of sets let's call them v alpha alpha in a okay so and uh, so then you so of course we want this to be open we assume this is open it's equal to the is evenly covered if the inverse image of this is a collection of disjoint open sets in f and where further we have the property that v alpha is open in the chap upstairs and crucially p restricted to v alpha this is going to be a map from v alpha to uh, uh, u is a homeomorphism okay so a neighborhood is evenly covered if there exists a so if the its inverse image is a bunch of copies of itself so more formally it's a bunch of open sets open upstairs each of which is mapped homeomorphically onto the given set itself okay so what we have is we have lots of evenly covered neighborhoods using that we'll define the concept of a covering space okay so so let's see cleanly what is a covering space and then we'll look at the main idea of this proof okay as i was saying so covering map is something which is a function so for example we have the covering map here which will map the space sorry not here but here this map is a covering map okay so this is a map uh, which takes p of t to e to the 2 pi i t which is more or less the spiral map the spiral map is uh, covered okay so this is called a covering map because as you see if i look at this neighborhood here uh, so it's not worth highlighting but pointing at it if i look at this neighborhood here it's inverse image so this is itself an open set its inverse image is a bunch of open sets okay and each one of them is mapped homeomorphically onto u just with image u so you can restrict the map from the inverse image to this and each one of these is a homeomorphism so this neighborhood is called evenly covered it's not it has covers which are these okay and covering map is it has to be subjective so that each point has an evenly covered neighborhood okay an alternative way of saying this is there's an open cover by evenly covered neighborhoods so that is called a surjective map okay so now let me uh, give the main idea here so what we want is our goal is to construct goal is associate to um let's say alpha mapping 0 1 uh to s1 let me write it out in full since i started that way i with both end points being equal to 1 a number an element in z and here is the picture and we'll formalize it okay so suppose this was actually a ramp and you had a vehicle or a person going up and down that ramp okay there's a car and i know right now it is here okay then its shadow down here will lie at some point and now suppose initially i was told that it's on this particular floor this is some parking lot and the car is driving winding round and round it's on this uh, it's particular floor sitting above but now i can only see the shadow of the car i cannot see the car itself okay and suppose i watch the movement of the shadow of the car i see the car go this way okay and then i see it going back maybe it went back all the way here then i see it going like this and this way and this way on maybe backtracks a bit and then goes here now i've seen the shadow ended up exactly where it started however the car has not ended up where it started you can easily deduce that the car moved this way it went back overshot its initial point went ahead okay they're not quite faithful 
went here had a little kink here and then went ahead and ended up one floor above where it started and note this is the only possibility from all we know is that your shadow is always below the car and the car is moving continuously it doesn't jump it immediately follows that this is the only possibility okay so what is the idea here the idea is that this covering map will tell you that you can point out from here to here so what is this uh, movement of the car how is it related to the shadow it is related by a commutative diagram so suppose the movement of the car was suppose this was an alpha here and this was what we called alpha tilde then what we have is that given alpha mapping some say 0 1 this is the position to s1 okay so then uh, what we have is the following alpha tilde satisfies we have 0 1 it's mapped by alpha to s1 and over here we have real numbers which is the guy sitting there that's the map p alpha tilde is this chap okay and alpha tilde of 1 is known sorry 0 is known we know where you were initially so the initial position of the car is known and we have the f at all times we know the position of the shadow and then alpha tilde is this unknown quantity it is what we called a lift okay so we looked at the lifting problem as a sample the reason for that is many but there are many reasons but one is that it's actually going to be really important here so what is the statement i'm hinting at the statement i'm hinting at is that if i know alpha which is a map to s1 and p is a covering map then alpha tilde the lift is actually going to be determined by its initial point okay and now what we can do is define a function which i sort of called phi of alpha to be alpha tilde of 1 minus alpha tilde of 0 okay so alpha tilde of 1 and alpha tilde of 0 remember alpha is a loop so alpha is an omega of xx uh, in this case not arbitrary xx0 s11 it means it begins and ends at 1 so alpha tilde of 1 and alpha tilde of 0 will both be in fact integers because their images are 1 so their difference is going to be an integer and the lift is not unique it's determined by a starting point but you can see that if you shift the lift the whole thing shifts so this difference is actually going to be unique so this is really the work we are going to do we are going to we have a no notion of covering space where things are evenly covered and that will let us show that given any path here this is a path and indeed we could replace this by uh, the general x and then we have a lift so this is x and this is y so any path gets lifted to a path and this lift is determined completely by the initial point okay and then we'll see homotopies lift so homotopic paths lift okay. we'll do it in certain way which is efficient for both parts and reveals the hypothesis even though it's not the shortest thing okay so that's our next key goal we have defined covering maps we'll keep looking at this picture and we'll try to, uh, we'll see why the lifts uh, exist first of all otherwise this doesn't lifting problems we saw may not have solutions and why the lift is also unique so that would be the key part and that would let us see what pi1 of r is s1 and that is a key part of this course